had a terrible effect on his mental state. He has Asperger's. He's had terrible uh, physical uh, heart pains every day. He's been to see a specialist. If someone touches him in the shoulder, he jumps. If the door goes, he thinks he's been dragged off. Janice Sharp has campaigned tirelessly for British computer hacker Gary McKinnon, her son, to remain in the UK. McKinnon, who has Asperger's syndrome, is facing extradition to the United States for breaking into American computer systems in 2001 and 2002. He admits intentionally gaining unauthorised access, but says he was simply doing research to find out whether the US government was covering up the existence of UFOs. That's not how the American authorities see it. They claim he carried out the biggest military computer hack of all time and cost the government close to a million dollars. If convicted in the US, he faces up to 60 years in jail. Gary McKinnon's fight against extradition has drawn support from a host of politicians and celebrities, in part because of his medical condition. David Gilmour from the rock band Pink Floyd, along with Bob Geldof and Chrissy Hind, have released a song called Chicago, Change the World, in support of his cause. But the driving force behind the campaign has been his mother, a musician and author of children's books. Janice Sharp is your connector of the day. My interview with Janice in just a moment. But first, a few facts on Asperger's syndrome. According to Britain's National Autistic Society, the condition affects uh, how a person makes sense of the world and processes information about it. Generally, you can't tell that someone has Asperger's just by looking at them. It tends to become apparent in social communication and interaction. People with Asperger's syn syndrome have fewer problems actually speaking than people with other forms of autism and they generally have average or above average intelligence. When I spoke to Janice Sharp, I started her by asking her, first of all, just for an update, really, about Gary's case. Uh, well, the next uh, court hearing is the uh, 25th and 26th of May, um, and it's a judicial review uh, against the Home Secretary's decision uh, that Gary should be extradited uh, in spite of the new evidence that had been put forward uh, but now there's actually uh, more evidence which the solicitors feel is quite compelling. It's about uh, Gary's mental health and the deterioration of his mental health, basically. Uh, so uh, when you describe his mental health, how would you describe it right now? Oh, it's horrendous. I mean, when you think of it, can you keep someone in a heightened state of stress for eight years? And you wouldn't do this to an animal. You wouldn't be allowed to. And to have someone every day you're in fear and terror that you've been dragged up. Gary has Asperger's syndrome, but quite apart from that, it's gone beyond that because you can't possibly be in that uh, heightened state of stress that you either fight or flight or Gary was suicidal, which is another option people take. If they don't do this, you almost have to escape somehow and so your mental health just deteriorates because you actually can't face it. Cliff O'Sullivan asks, how has the whole case affected your life and that of your nearest and your dearest apart from Gary? Well, it basically puts it on hold. You can't do anything because you don't know what the future holds. And because it's my son, it's on my mind every second, every waking second of every day. I think how I can fight it, who I can contact, what I can do. So you don't have another life. Also, as far as earning a living, it's very difficult because you don't have the time. This is 24-7. People imagine we've got campaign headquarters. We don't. We have me in front of the computer. And I just, I sit till four o'clock in the morning sometimes, I can't stop. Uh, and so for Gary, it's the worst of all because only he is literally facing being dragged across there. But for everyone, it's actually eight years of torture and that, that's hard to deal and with. And this is just about whether he's going to stand trial. This is just the extradition process. So if it goes beyond this, you're going to have an even more lengthy process, aren't you? Um, Bruna uh, Zanellis says, if you had the opportunity, what would you say to President Barack Obama regarding this horrendous situation, she calls it. Oh, please, Obama, do you want the first person ever extradited for computer crime to be a UFO guy with Asperger's syndrome? It doesn't look good for America. It doesn't look good for the UK. Uh, no one in the world has ever been extradited for uh, computer misuse. And Gary has always denied the alleged damage. 
without the damage, it wasn't an extraditable offence. Had the American prosecutors applied to extradite in 2002, they would have to have proved the damage and shown evidence. But they waited and he was re-arrested in mid-2005 because by then the UK was using a treaty, a one-sided treaty, they signed with America, and now America doesn't have to provide any evidence whatsoever to extradite any British citizen. They only have to say, I suspect. You admit um, that there... Uh, you dispute the damage that was caused. Absolutely. But what do you and Gary admit he did do? Gary admitted the computer misuse. He admitted he... So it's a crime? It's a crime, not an, crime. not an extraditable crime. Only with the damage was it extraditable. So a crime that you feel he should face in the trial UK. for in the UK. You accept that? Absolutely. You just don't want it done in America? Absolutely. But there's a fair system in America, isn't there? It's beside the point. It's not an extraditable offence, so why should he be? And also people say, well, asparagus isn't a defence. Well, of course it isn't, but no one with asparagus or without asparagus has ever been extradited for computer crime. So why discriminate against someone who has and think, well, you're the only one we're going to take? Okay. Because he admitted to uh, the computer misuse with no lawyer. He signed a piece of paper, which is in the transcripts of the police, that was illegible and neither the police nor Gary could read. That, that's a sort of thing that someone who is naive because of the asparagus has done, whereas someone else just wouldn't do that. JK says, as a person with family members with autism, I think that despite your son's condition, he should be held accountable. Don't most people with Asperger's consider themselves unique yet fully capable? Same thing again. Gary has never denied responsibility. He's never uh, said that he didn't want to be tried. He wants to be tried in his own country by a jury of his peers, which is right under the Magna Carta. And once again, no one has ever been. And also, the thing about the biggest military hack is untrue. In the last court hearing, the judge had said that others who had been before him British people who had hacked into the Pentagon, uh, accused of almost starting a third world war, were not extradited. It wasn't requested. There was also a guy from Israel who had hacked into the military computers. No extradition request was made. Basically, Gary was naive. He admitted to computer misuse. And I think that's the reason this has gone totally out of proportion. Janice Sharp there speaking about her son, who says he did actually find evidence of UFOs when he went into that computer system.